presentation, not just about co-creation by Anna, but with the title Beyond Co-Creation. So I'm hoping to learn what will come, what's next. What's next? Okay, here it goes. What's with them? What's co? <laughs> Thank you. So the presentation I called Beyond Co-Creation because we will, um, uh, I will try to uh, show you things that probably you already know about how the world is now changing and how there are so and I how uh, there are already so many meaningful and interesting things to build up the design world of tomorrow. Uh, many experience that I. Um, many uh, experiences from different people working in design in different level that I put on together. But let's start uh, with a very generalized uh, uh, thing about, we have to understand, as I said before, the, the context huh, we are living in. And uh, in most design school, as I said before, we don't have the chance to really grab how uh, these things are changing and why uh, we we shouldn't we have to worry about that we have to understand the situation and and students and tomorrow's designer have to really uh, grab the thing that uh, uh, our Western industrial economy is turning to uh, a point that it has to take another direction and doing other things so and the culture and the behavior has to uh, go with it not anticipate, go with it. Everybody knows about the 2080 issues and the 22 issue now, 20% of the country consume 80% of the resources and only 20 of the country, 20% uh, of the country uses 2% of the resources. So uh, there is a huge uh, disparity among how uh, we uh, as people and we as a society use the resources that the earth is giving to us. And so it, without these resources, designers can do anything. So that start, should be a starting point for every designer. Uh, so we have to, the, the first thing is what, what Chris also said before, is that the thing we have to change is probably the concept of well-being. And the designers is the person who we hope, will bring about uh, uh, a better uh, um, concept of well-being. And we have to co-create this well-being and facilitate uh, alternative and valuable economic models. Uh, at both scales, we have to do and build new economic models together. Um, how to build these new economic models and how to bring <laughs> values to the thing we will produce we will uh, bring to the world uh, without uh, knowing the value of these things. And the th interesting thing I found is that you probably know Vendana Shiva, and you probably know Tim Brown of Idea. Huh? They are in two very different positions. Huh? From one side, we have Vendana Shiva, bi biologist and uh, consultant uh, of the gov government too, and vice president of the Slow Food International. And she's saying that we have to bring a value. Huh? We have to understand and uh, reclaim the interesting value of everything on Earth. Huh? And says, of course, that everything is the, 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 the evil, is the greed that we have, and the thing that we consider everything as a commodity, huh? even the people. On the other end, we have Tim Brown of IDEO. Everybody knows the company IDEO. So a consultant company working with the uh, with the most of Western uh, societies saying exactly the same thing, which is curious. Huh? Is it only marketing or are they really believing it? I, I hope they believe it. I want to look at it as a, in a very positive way. Try to be very positive. And so what Tim Brown says is value is based on knowledge and not on stuff. Huh? That's strange. He produces a lot of stuff. In, at IDEO, but he says that. Huh? And today's participa participatory behaviors are an indication of this change going on, participatory behaviors, co-creation. 
How do we make meaning out of this value and not obligatory money out of everything? He who has invented uh, the computer, so to say. Here you have the, the photo again <laughs> and an explanation that I gave just before. So the urgent need to build shared visions for a sustainable future thanks to innovation initiatives, either product services, systems. <coughs> of course, you know that the, the European community is doing a lot in designing for social innovation and helping with the uh, policy, uh, innovation policies. Um, there are a few uh, methodologies on co-creation around uh, that help us and that will help us probably to live better, consume less environmental resources, regenerate our context of life. I want to stay in this ideal. <laughs> I hope that we will uh, engage everybody to and, uh, and inspire our future designers to go in this direction. And uh, uh, there is somebody called uh, Halistar Fuad Luke who uh, has theorized the slow uh, design. Uh, in 2004, uh, who is talking about, but I said, are we talking up to the, about slow methodologies or slow co-design methodologies? Because the co-design, it's always implied in this kind of methodologies. Yes, if you design spaces, real or virtual, that enables us to think, react, dream, amuse. Yes. Uh, there's not the S, I'm sorry. If you design for social cultural benefits, and well-being. I won't explain you the, uh, the images because I, I suppose that you know that, but if you don't know that, please stop me and say, ah, I would like to know more about that. Um, yes, if you design to catalyze behavioral change and in general, social cultural transformation. <coughs> yes, if you design for people first. Okay, I'm repeating myself what I said before, but you know, it's never enough for me. Uh, and commer commercialization second. Yes, if you design for the planet's regenerative environmental benefits and well-being. Yes, if you design for local first, global second. If you design to create new economic and business models and opportunity. But of course, in this, in the same uh, mindset, and yes, if you democratize design by encouraging self-initiated design. There are signals uh, and visions already or of these things already happening all around. Hmm? So I've gathered here uh, plenty of information of medias already working in this, uh, in this direction and communicating in this, in this direction. There, is, there are medias like World Changing of Alex Stefan, Graced, uh, there are consulting community members like the Clear Village Observatory. Uh, there are uh, uh, consulting companies in the US uh, proposing citizens uh, a tailored uh, uh, um, uh, follow-up uh, for doing uh, design, um, um, their own design in a, in a, in a sustainable way. Uh, there are also societies like this one uh, who work uh, um, with the people who want to invest in a greener economy uh, worldwide. There are schools uh, like the Living School, who is just next door in Paris where I live. Uh, there is this school who is uh, proposing to children from the ground, ground school um, an holistic approach uh, to to, to life, huh? and so I, I'm sure. But I'm sure that these people who are educated into the respect of uh, the nature, of uh, the stuff, of uh, the people surrounding them, uh, could be and will be. I hope good designers. Um, there are um, in the in the, in the energy field. There are also uh, alternatives. Huh? and uh, people already uh, choosing for alternative way of, uh, um, um, of uh, how do you say it, to... Um, uh, 
uh, I don't know, alternative way to, uh, to use the, the electricity, which is uh, the, the main resources, and to use energy, huh? how to reconsider, not only uh, in using alternative energies. It exists, with, uh, does not, but everybody has the habit to do and not to change the things that he, they used to. So even in France, most of the people use EDF, uh, and they don't look for alternative solutions like this one, for example. It's very difficult to, to help people, to help citizens to take a step and go ahead and say, hey, there is an alter alternative, there is a possibility to do things differently. And that's the role that the designer will have to, to have. There are other design medias, like the Tree Hugger, uh, Design Education, this, the DESIS Network that was started in, in, in Milano by, in the Politecnico by Yezzo Manzini, uh, the LENS, which is another learning network on sustainability. There are uh, uh, um, uh, design community networks like a social innovation exchange, the tree, uh, the designers accord. I will pass by it, and then I will. I can go in, into it if you want more. Um, International Network for Sustainable Design too. There is also here in Luxembourg. I know. Uh, there is also this Social Innovation Awards. That's from the design point of view. I would criticize a little bit because uh, the designers also have to bring. I didn't talk about that before. A certain aesthetics to convince the people to to bring them to an idea. So this one is not really good example, but for me it was interesting to see that uh, in the social innovation awards there, are, there were things like finance, purchasing, product design, philanthropy, uh, for this kind of award. Um, there are also design uh, social environmental enterprise like the Seed Foundation in the UK with Claire Brass, who now is leading a, a transverse, transversal um, a sustainability program at the Royal College of Art. Uh, there is, uh, of course, uh, um, Architecture for Humanity as a social design organization. And here I took an example that Sophie gave me <laughs> of uh, good examples here also in, in Luxembourg that I didn't know before, uh, working internationally um, to help uh, and give the solutions to people that don't live in the same condition as we do. And this one too. So if some, there is somebody of this, um, um, of this two organization, well done. This is another uh, example of saying that, yeah, uh, before you saw the Tim Brown uh, was talking about rediscovering the value, etc. And he's this is actually is a site uh, belonging to IDEO, which is called Living Climate Change. And they're doing scenarios and um, uh, to see how the future will look like huh, for the company uh, in, in 20 or 30 years. In not a completely peak oil, uh, peak oil um, perspective, but kind of. So it's really interesting to know that companies like IDEO are doing, the, are doing this. Of course, uh, citizens uh, are more and more responsible. And uh, probably you know about these transition towns. There is also, a, in Holland, uh, the first group, uh, uh, research group uh, at the Erasmus University called Great Grit, Grit uh, that they're working on transition and research, uh, design research on transition at the Erasmus University. And I don't know if you are, if you are familiar to this concept. Uh, they are just small towns. For the, for the moment, the size is really small of towns all over the, all over the world who decided to, uh, to do and uh, to advance from now on in, in, a, um, in a provision of peak oil. And so they are bringing about uh, memory banks, uh, time banks, uh, and this kind of social innovation activities to, to uh, rediscover and see what you were saying before also, Chris, the memory, to see what we were, to understand, uh, understand who we are, uh, to understand really the context they have to act on, and what will be the next step. So they are putting everything uh, and restarting from scratch, which I found very interesting. And I was kind of happy to know that the first transition town in Italy was just next to Bologna, which is my hometown, which is Monteveglio. 
Um, okay, this is another initiative, time banking, fix my street, uh, neighborhoods in initiative. This is a very good friend of mine. I don't know if you know this uh, network. It was called La Ruche Qui Dit Oui. Uh, that it's kind of co-op. Uh, uh, initiative that is uh, uh, there are people all over France for the moment they say hi I would like to uh, buy uh, healthy food and vegetables from this uh, uh, this kind of fruit and vegetables and when there is a, uh, the uh, um, uh, an, an amount of uh, fruit and vegetables that uh, is enough for, for one person who cultivates to say yes I'm ready to deliver you then the Rouge says yes and they deliver the people uh, that uh, need for this more healthier, healthier food and sustainable food. Uh, it's another kind of uh, service uh, uh, compared to the COHOP or the AMAP, as we call it in France. So it's uh, go and have a look what it is. Very interesting. And then there is Superman meet between neighborhoods that uh, everybody you know working in the street and say, oh, I would like to have a, uh, I, I eat something different than a sandwich or or, uh, or something quick. Uh, who is cooking uh, in my in my? So it's kind of an app uh, in your mobile that you say, oh, okay, in my neighbor there is this people cooking this for me. He has cooked a little bit more, so I can go there and and eat something. Um, so how has the role of the designer evolved? I cite here uh, something, uh, a phrase of uh, Gunther Pauli, that we don't have to think about we have to, uh, to give up. But what we can create thanks to design, huh? there are many uh, theories about uh, the decree, uh, decroissance, uh, how do you say it in, in English? Growth. The growth. Uh, but uh, actually, I, I don't think that's the, the thinking of sacrifice is good to people. We have to think and uh, we have to design to, to design to give uh, people's ideas a form. Huh? I completely agree. But what is this form? It's just not a plastic form like this one, which I completely disagree, for example. This is an object by ideal. Uh, and uh, it's called aqueduct. It, it was meant to be for the third world countries. But can you imagine going with this bicycle on the street in Africa? And then there is a, um, here, you put, uh, of course, uh, um, undrinkable water. And then by, by cycling, it becomes drinkable. Uh, so I don't think uh, they really have studied enough the, the context where this uh, object had to, uh, should be for. So. Uh, that's a problem. So we give a former, but after having understand, huh? so it's the people who should tell and not the designers, as somebody criticizes me before. I agree. It's the people first, and the designer have to be the translators, huh? the facilitators. Um, this is a criti <laughs> criticize of a Dutch designer. And, uh, and uh, I, I, th I found it very funny. I'm here to create an environment of love, live with passion, and make the most exciting dreams come true. I don't think that's the way we have to do design. That's the thing, the freedom um, uh, that Illich was talking before. We have had too much freedom. Now try to focalize again on what is essential and what should be the next step. So uh, we designers more have to, not, not only to have fun and do what they like, yeah, they have to listen to people. Uh, they have to be able to create new economic models huh? and use their creativity to trigger that, huh? to stimulate that, to enhance that. And of course, with uh, empathy, a lot of empathy. So these models can make people happier and healthier. Why not? That's what the transition movement says. This is another example of shareable cities. These modes make people independent. That's the, probably you know iFix. Uh, the example of iFix is uh, um, this platform where you can go and discover how to fix your own thing so you can be the designer, for the repairing and the designers for yourself. And then, of course, so there is a question of uh, whom belongs the idea. So, of course, you, everybody, I think, uh, among you knows the creative, the creative commons. Hmm. And uh, yeah, in Milan, I was in Milan last week. So, the dome of the product design and of uh, huh? 
And uh, the, the most interesting uh, exhibition I saw, it was the one organized by the review Domus, uh, which was the, the future of making, or the future of, uh, what was the title? The future of making, of the making, I think. And it was the, it was the first time that they showed, actually, the, the results of Kickstarter. Kickstarter uh, uh, allows to, um, uh, to to change completely the the, the chain, the, the natural path, the, the chain of the designer that he designs, and there is a producer, then there is a distributor. And with the Kickstarter, so people asking money for uh, building uh, uh, their own projects, and if uh, people um, believe in this project, they give money. And in most of the cases that they showed, they collect much more money than what they ask for. And they had the possibility to produce these objects. So uh, it's really a, a, um, a way of thinking the product completely different. And I think the designers have to think about that, because we have the tools to do that now. So how will this impact the design world, this kind of activities? There are, of course, uh, uh, open source uh, possibility, all these open source possibilities change the way, uh, uh, the way uh, designers uh, uh, will look uh, at the artifacts they will do, because there will be common artifacts. They will be, uh, a part of that could be done from, uh, from very f different parts of the world and, uh, um, and uh, and be uh, produced, for example, at the home at the f of the f um, in the home of the final user with 3D printers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and the Arduino now uh, available uh, at in every in every house. So it's a it's a, it's a real production and uh, and distribution uh, revolution. These are other examples of models that allow this knowledge share. Uh, new knowledge share and, uh, and then collaboration opportunities. Um, these models foster, of course, behavioral change. Huh? I can also show this, but I think I will pass because these are examples of my students, unless you want to, to have a look at it, but I think we will go to the conclusion, I think. Uh, but we, you can, I can just quickly explain to you this one. It's a cube that is inside a coffee, um, a cafe associative, association coffee, and this kind of modules of cubes have allowed this space to live in a completely different way that it used to, to live before. So the designer, when they studied uh, the fluxes and uh, the movement of the people living in, the, in this building, the different activities, uh, and uh, after having listed and uh, hierarchized all the different activities and understood them, talked to people, etc., has come to a module that has helped them really to reorganize uh, their activity. And uh, this is Velobar. Uh, it's another complex project, but uh, it's mainly uh, why cycling. Uh, you produce the energy to um, heat the food that you will serve, and the food is, of course, uh, um, um, a zero carbon uh, uh, produced in the neighborhood of Paris, etc. And the person who is driving the bike is a person who was unemployed, so he's an employment scheme, etc., etc. So it's a very complex, multi layered uh, project. Um, so, the conclusion. Uh, we, uh, I, I, I liked what the transition movement to say, okay, probably if we do the thing this way, we will be happier. Huh? We know all about the Bhutan and the happiness, uh, um, uh, how do you, what is called the happiness um, index. And so consider that happiness is not dependent on material wealth. Huh? We have to rethink of our own definition of wealth. Huh? and of course of the designers that bring this new wealth. So designing for the social innovation needs to reconsider, I think, the four cardinal vir virtues of antiquity, huh? the, the, need, uh, the wisdom huh? to see, hey, wh wh what am I doing? Huh? Am I responsible for the thing I'm doing? Uh, do I know uh, uh, what this, what would be the consequence of the thing, of the act, of the product, of the service I'm developing right now? Do I know this? Am I wise enough? 
The second is the courage, uh, the courage to make uh, probably a choice that, uh, like Mustafa did, that probably not everybody does. Uh, and to say, I, I give a meaning to my life, and I think to give meaning to the life of a, of a, of a community. And because uh, this will work, it will spread. Very simple model. Um, and the justice, of course, uh, hoping that there will be a just uh, distribution of welfare and everything with moderation. Another very important thing is the modesty uh, that the designer have to have. I didn't spoke about that. The designers have to be translator, facilitator. So they have, a, they have to have the capability of listening, uh, listening, and then speak, like, a, like, like for everything. So moderation in everything we consume can require for a good life and a fair standard of, of living. And of course, everything that the designer has to produce. And it's not just about design. Huh? It's about redesigning everything, education, integrity, politeness, amiability. And uh, yeah, I'm probably too positive, but I think that uh, a kind of renaissance of uh, humanism and humans as a social creature, thanks to design, should be welcome. Thank you. <laughs>